everyone, Ileana here. Um, so for this next lesson, we'll be talking about indicator species and what they can tell us about a given environment. So indicator species um, give us clues about the overall health of an ecosystem. So down in the LA River, um, we have macroinvertebrates that live in the water. So a macroinvertebrate is an organism, so a little critter with no spine that is large enough, so it's macro, it's large enough for us to be able to see it without any fancy equipment. We could see it with our own naked eye. And there are many different types of macroinvertebrates down here in the water. Um, and they give us clues about the environment, about the river, um, because there are many different macros and some are, are tolerant and some are sensitive and some are in between. Um, so when a critter is sensitive, that means that they can't really tolerate a lot of different conditions. They can't really tolerate when the water is um, poor quality. They don't survive, they can't make it, their shells may dissolve. Um, and when a macro is tolerant, that means that they can handle um, different conditions, maybe conditions that are not so great. Um, and there's also macros that are in the middle, so somewhat tolerant, somewhat sensitive. Um, so it, we could go down into the river and collect samples. We could look at the water and study what macros are found. And depending on what we find, we may find a lot of sensitive species, so that tells us that the water is good. Um, or we might find only tolerant species, so that may tell us that the water is not so great that day. And this is a very um, simple, inexpensive way to study the water quality because we don't need fancy equipment really. Um, all we need to do is go down there, maybe with a cup or a container, we could look for macros that are in the water and they give us clues about a specific um, region of the river. And also macros don't really travel that far, so we could gain clues about an ecosystem. Okay, so when we go out to the river and we look for macros that live in the water and we look for different critters, well, we are um, working as scientists. We are scientists out making observations. This is exactly what a scientist does. They first come up with a hypothesis, which is a, an educated guess, an informed guess, their best guess, and then they go out and they look for evidence. So evidence that will support their hypothesis um, and prove it right or maybe prove it wrong and they have to go back to their books and come up with a different hypothesis and then once again come out um, come out to the environment that they are studying and look for more evidence um, so it's a lot of it's a process you know trial and error so looking for macros is actually quite simple all you need is a container or a cup um, something to help you scoop up the water and get some samples and then you want to swish the water around. Um, macros like to hang out in murkier water, so you want to swish it around. And they also like to be around algae, because that's where they feed. So you want to swish the water around, you scoop it up, and you see what you find. And they're still very, very tiny, even though you can see them with your naked eye. They are very small, um, so you have to look closely and see if you spot anything swimming around the water. I haven't found anything yet. Oh, I found something. Oh, that's a big one. Yeah. Because we're not so sure what kind of macro this is, we will be using our data sheets to help us identify. Um, and according to our data sheets, we think that it might be a caddisfly larvae. So it is in a, the sensitive group. So it's a sensitive species, meaning that it is unable to tolerate poor conditions. So we are thinking that the water might be cleaner today, which is a good sign. It's a good sign when you find sensitive species. If you enjoyed these
these videos, please consider visiting our website, folar.org, and making a donation. Um, your contribution will really help us continue to expand our education programs, our online curriculum, our policy work, and will really help us come up with unique ways to connect the community um, to the river and to all the nature around us.